Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today is Wednesday, hump day, <laughs> and um, today I thought I would do a quick video. It's going to be like a combo video, and it's going to be inspired by what I was talking about yesterday, or day before yesterday, with weight loss. And um, I thought when I talked about that, I would go ahead and talk about something else that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about, especially to my younger viewers out there, you girls that are in your teens or 20s or even early 30s or I don't know I think we can all take some advice at all times of our life and um, just everything I say today is just from my experience and my opinion and um, I I don't want to offend anybody so just take it as this is just my opinion okay um, I want to touch on the weight loss thing for one but I also I've been reading this book uh, by Brandy Glanville, Drinking and Tweeting. It took me forever to get it because I kept going to Barnes and Nobles to get it and they were out of it. It was selling so quickly I hadn't made it to the store. And I'm on like chapter 11 now and I really like her. And she is, I know she cusses and she doesn't dress, you know, but very she really has the qualities that I love in a person. I love when somebody is just real. I mean, they can tell, they just say, I mean, I think that she could filter herself some sometimes, and I think even she would say that, but sorry, Chanel has decided to play with something right here while I'm doing this. And, um, but I like somebody that's just very real and just says what they think and, um, you know, you know how that goes. Okay, but she was talking about her divorce, which I can relate to on so many levels. Thank goodness I didn't have children. But um, one of her things, and at every end of every chapel, at the end of every chapter she has brandy's babble and at the end of this chapter it says overindulgence can be a good thing especially when it teaches you what you don't need and i thought gosh that is so profound to me because i've always thought that that i mean i'm so glad that early in my life when i was married before my husband we went from having, you know, just we both were working. He was working actually for my dad, and then he started working for a local car dealership, and I was working uh, waitressing and stuff, and we went from having, you know, just paying our bills to really, you know, we, gosh, we were paying our bills and had some extra, and he ended up making a lot of money for our age, and we had a brand new house. Um, I had a brand new Corvette. He had a brand new, that was when the OJ thing was going on. He had a brand new Bronco, just like OJ's. And, but along with that, we had bills. I mean, everything had a payment. And therefore, we were so, I mean, I felt like a lot of stress was put on him that I didn't even realize at the time. And when we got separated, you know, in hindsight, I always felt so bad about that because... I'm sure he loved giving me diamonds and all the things that we were doing, you know, going just on the spur of the moment, like leaving within an hour, going to Atlantic City and just the things that we would do that were just so much fun, especially for a couple that's 23, 24, 25 years old. And, um, you know, I loved my car, but gosh, that car payment. And I loved my house, but gosh, that house payment. And I learned that lesson. And that's why John and I, you know, we could probably, our friends all have bigger, most of our friends, I, I guess, I think I would say, have bigger houses or, you know, a lot of them moved into gated communities when the boom was going on. And we've, we've said from the beginning, we built this house ourselves, we saved a lot of money and we're not leaving. And his truck is one that his dad gave him and it's paid off. Um, and my car is really nothing extravagant, it's affordable. And it's the car we take, you know, everywhere. We never get in John's car. He basically just drives that to work into the gym and stuff. And um, I just, I tell you, I will never be a slave to a car payment ever again. There's no car that's worth driving that is worth that big car payment because you're going to find yourself, if you can, the only way to have a really nice car is if you can afford just to pay for it. I mean, Wait, that's just I the way I also, feel. I have just learned so many lessons that I would love to just, and I know... A lot of people, when you're young, you just don't listen and you have to kind of go through a lot of things. But, you know, I sat back and, back and looked at like John's parents and both of my grandparents were very well off when they passed away. 
and they came from really nothing, but they worked really hard. They were all entrepreneurs. Um, John's dad was military, and when he retired from that, he went and retired from another job. They all lived in the exact same house that my parents grew up in and John grew up in. And they didn't, you know, the more money they made, they didn't just go out and buy bigger houses and better cars. They saved and they paid off and then they could buy things that they enjoyed. They could travel. They could spoil their grandchildren. They could do things like that. And so I feel blessed that I went through some of those experiences young. And, you know, John is very good with money. He's very responsible. We don't have, we have debit cards and that's it. We do not have any credit cards. We don't have any loans. And therefore I can afford to spend a little bit of money that I make on, cause I, I do believe in good makeup. <laughs> and um, which touches on another thing that I wanna, wanted to, I've been wanting to talk to you about I don't about know this. if you've noticed, but this year, I'm not really spending as much on my clothes. I might be still buying clothes, but I'm trying to get um, just things that I like at, on sale or, you know, definitely not spending the money that I spent last year. And that was kind of like just a thing that I had to go through. I mean, I'm a person that really has to go full circle on a lot of things. And I would love for you to just, you know, experience it through me. If I could just save a couple of people from doing some things that I've done, it would be great. <laughs> And um, like my parents always says, do as I say, not as I do. And um, I believe that. But I spent a lot of money on clothes and I enjoyed it. But a lot of them are still hanging in the closet with the tags on. A lot of them washed just and dried terribly. They were just not worth the money. And one thing that I really, really do, I really do like buying things that are made in the USA. And a lot of times you end up paying more for that. But a lot of that stuff, it just wasn't worth it. And it's kind of like I had to experience that. I always thought, gosh, if I got some extra money, I would love to buy, you know, this brand and that brand and, you know, all those expensive brands. Now, I do really love my designer jeans, like my Seven for All Mankind and my current Elliott. They do feel different. They just do. They're softer. I just feel like they wear better. So I will still, there are a few things that I think are worth it. Just like makeup, there are a few things that I think are worth it. But I'm not gonna do that anymore where I just dress head to toe in expensive clothes and feel like it's gonna make me look any better because it didn't. I think that when I look back at my outfits of the day, that's the thing that I have going for me and going against me is I can look back and see, and it's so weird. It's like no matter how long ago the video was, I can, I feel, once I start watching it, I can put myself, I feel right like I did that day. I can remember how I felt and what I was thinking. And, um, you know, I look back at some of those outfits and it was hilarious. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I worked through it and I'm not going to do that anymore. And the same thing with my hair. I always thought if I had, as, you know, some extra money, I'm going to go to the best salon in town and I'm going to have them do my hair. Well, I did, and you see what happened. I went in with hair, you know, this long, and ended up with hair this long, and it's it was my own fault. There were things I did I knew I shouldn't have done, but don't think that the best, most expensive place in town is gonna be the person that does the best And I just hair. realized that it, when I went there, I just spent a lot more money. I mean, a lot more So this more year, money. I'm going to so spend so much less money on hair and clothes. Okay, so along that. with that comes my weight loss. And you guys know that I have been on a... I've kind of done a weight loss roller coaster since starting my videos four years ago. And when I started my videos, I was at my heaviest. And I didn't really hardly even realize it. Um, back then, I remember, I, you know, Will was, I think, about... He was probably about five years old and you know i'd already lost my baby weight of course because i gained a lot with both of them at like 60 pounds and i've never had a weight problem and i wasn't overweight then i was just at the time i decided i wanted to lose some weight and i've always been able to lose weight pretty easily i've either done it with the um cutting way down on carbs um, that's usually how i do it um and then this time so i went up i started up i went down and then I went back up a little bit about two years ago. And then um, last, I think I started in July, 
I just decided I am losing some weight. I am going to just blow off this weight. I mean, I just decided no matter what, I was just going to drop weight quick. And so, um, my last video, I told you what I ate. I skipped breakfast usually, which I still do kind of skip breakfast. I'm just not a big breakfast eater. But I was eating a muffin and a salad, brown rice and everything, and I lost a lot of weight. I, for me, I went from probably 138, 140 to 125, 125 to 127. And I love the way my body felt. I love the way I felt. Um, I love the clothes that I could wear, which a lot of them just don't fit my body type, no matter how, you know, thin I get. It's kind of like Gina said, it's kind of like you don't expect somebody built like Kim Kardashian to be skinny because that's not her body type. You don't expect someone like Kate Moss to have a big curvy frame. That's just, you know, you are who you are. And I think I was really trying to fight against my body type, which is hourglass. I'm a curvy girl. And I don't know, I've, every time I've ever lost weight, I've had men tell me that they liked me better with weight on, but I don't know why women can't listen to that. And I just want to tell you, if you are in your late 30s or over 40, do not lose weight like I did all of a sudden because it came off of the most unflattering places. First of all, okay, back up a little bit. I have gained back. I probably weigh about 133 now. And I, I want to stay between 133 and 135. I think that's a good weight for me. And I feel so much better. Now, do my legs and everything feel as good as they did when I'm naked? No. But I have to make a decision. Do I want to feel good when I'm naked or do I want to feel good when I've got clothes on? And I know that's a big decision, but I just, I think I want to feel better now. And you go through, you know, some days you want to feel better naked, but I look better in clothes when I have a little bit of weight on. And my face, oh my goodness. I've got my mirror here, so right here, I mean, I don't know if you can see how, like, how much weight I lost right here, how much weight in here, in here, and what really made me notice it is when you guys leave comments on older videos, you know, I click on the comment to answer you and the video pops up. Well, I'm going to try to find the video that really made me notice it. There's a couple of them. I'm going to put the links down below and you will see how much prettier and better my face looks. It just looks so round and soft and squishy. And I just think women should be soft. And I don't think women should be like picket fences. You know, it's like, you know, I don't want every single bone. I mean, I just started noticing like every tendon in my neck and bone sticking out when I took pictures especially in the car. Like I would take a picture to put on my Instagram or whatever and I would just see, I think on my thumbnail now, you can see every little, you know, bone in my neck and I hate that. And, and if I you really are naturally thin and straight, well then that's how you're gonna look best. You kind of have to go with what God gave you and what you've matured into. I was blessed, I mean, I had a cellulite free, perfect, perfect bikini body probably until I had children. And I guess I was lucky to have that. And you know, that ship has sailed. <laughs> and I realize that. And I'm lucky I have a husband who loves me. He loves my curves. And so I don't have to worry about that. And um, so back to my face. Now I can already see, you know, some fat coming back into my face. My hands, oh my goodness, look at my hands, how skinny and thin they are. It was like I lost every bit of fat underneath, you know, my hands. And what I've been told is when you get older, in your late 30s and 40s, you really need to lose weight gradually. Because if you lose weight like I did, where you just say, I'm an all or nothing person and I love to just challenge myself. And that's why you've never seen me go on a no makeup buy, because I would do it and I don't want to. <laughs> so. I, if I tell myself I'm going to do something, I do it. I have really good self-control. If I want to cut out caffeine, I will do it. If I want to cut out a food group, like I did meat one time, I will do it. And when I wanted to lose weight quick, I did it. I think I lost five pounds in one week. And it really came from some ugly places. And one thing, too, is when you get older, your skin is just not going to snap back 
just because you lose that weight doesn't mean you're gonna you know you lose that weight in your thighs it doesn't mean your thigh is going to just snap back into that I would much rather thigh. No. when i look at those pictures in those videos of where i like my face sure when i do my outfit of the day sure my stomach looks bigger sure my thighs look bigger but i don't look that bad you know i just look like a more of a voluptuous person and that's really what my body frame is and i think when you go against how you're built it just doesn't work for you so the way that ties into the overindulgence is I overindulged in being thin and it just I've been there now I've done that I always thought oh I want to get back down to 125 or 127 because that's the weight that I was when I met John well trust me I don't look the same at 125 or 127 as I did when I got married because I've had children and I could go have a tummy tuck. I've even, I've gone to a consultation for a tummy tuck because I had to have my, my belly button was herniated from when I had children and it kind of um, pulled away and pulled out. And so I had to have it operated on and put back and attached back because it was painful. And so I had the bright idea of maybe when I had my belly button fixed, they could do a tummy tuck and whoo that sounded brutal it sounded a little too brutal it was expensive brutal and they couldn't do it at the same time they did the belly button so i've of course never had that done but you know i've thought about it you know i've got this skin luckily i did not have any stretch marks because my mom blessed me with i think that's hereditary blessed me with some good pretty elastic elasticy stretchy skin so i don't have stretch marks but you know when i lost weight on my arms i mean look at that i mean it's not terrible but I like it better when it's just, I don't know, not really plump, but firm. So I'm really going to try to, I'm not an exercise person. I never will be. I don't even like exercise clothes. I don't even like tennis shoes. I do like walking. I love going to the beach and walking the loop. That's one, always been one of my favorite things. So I am going to start doing that when the weather warms up. I'm not much on being out in the cold and my ears hurting and everything. But, um, and I like my, we have an elliptical. I like doing that. Um, and I'm gonna I've got hand weights and stuff like that and I would love to find a good Pilates class Maybe not at the gym But I don't know I'm gonna check into that a little bit because um Brandy who's 40 which our body types are none alike um, But she was bragging on Pilates and I think that might be something I like to do but so the main thing I wanted to say about weight loss is be careful, you know, don't just think that it's going to make you so happy and that you're going to look so much better because I really don't think it made me look much better. Um, maybe a little bit in my clothes, um, skinny jeans or something, but not that much. I mean, not that much more than now. I can still wear the same size. I've always bought my clothes too big anyway, so I can still wear all the things that I bought. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of find that happy medium. I'm going to stay about where I am now, which is last time I weighed, which I hadn't been weighed every morning, but it was, I think, 133 point something. And um, so, and I wish I could gain like five more pounds and tell it where to go. I would tell it to go here, here, in my face, and in my hands is where I'd like it to go. Even my feet got real bony looking, and to me, bony just looks old. So, on me, on me, I don't want to, you know, offend anybody because everybody has their own you have to you have to do what you want to do that's for sure so i hope this may have helped you a little bit um at least it gives you insight into how i feel um and so many of you have asked me like why i don't go to the same hair salon i love everybody there i miss them but you know i just don't want to spend that money anymore i just really don't i want to it's so refreshing now when i go to the girl that i go to it's just me and her and you know it's just when it's time to pay i pay her um, it, I don't feel shuffled around. I'm in and out of there in like an hour, and it's just so refreshing. But I wouldn't know that had I not done it. And, um, you know, I always wondered what it would be like to go to the nicest salon in town, and now I know. And so I don't feel like I've missed out, and I just wanted to kind of tell you about it. So I'm going to do a quick, very casual outfit of the day. Today I'm going out and getting my camera. I've got a couple I'm going to look at, and um, Today I have I'll be right my... back. I wouldn't call it a crazy outfit, but a lot of people wouldn't put this together. But I love these Victoria's Secret. They're the they're in the pink range, but they're the fleece legging like sweatpants. And um, these are mediums. And 
I love them. They're so comfortable and so warm. And I went back yesterday, or actually I called to see if they had any more. And she said, no, they had clearanced them out, which makes me sick. And um, they do still have them on the website, but they're full price. But I love these. And um, just a James Purse tank, which is one of, I'll always tell you the things that I think are worth it. These are worth it. It's the James Purse ribbed tank. And I've got one of those really pretty um, Lay Mystere the princess bra underneath it, which kind of looks like a camisole. And this company went out of business, or they sold. So I don't know, I don't think you can still get these. But, um, and then I'm gonna have this on all day because I'm gonna be running in and out of Costco, Best Buy, all that kind of good stuff. And um, this is just a gap, like little puffer coat, and it's kind of like in the motorcycle um, design. And I love it because it's got good pockets, and it's very, it's kind of thin, but still real warm. It isn't real bunchy in the car. And um, you can kind of put the collar up and it's just one of my or favorite shoes. coats. I don't want to wear tennis shoes. So I'm wearing just my fry boots, um, which not everybody would probably wear with sweatpants, but I don't care. I like it. And um, sometimes I like kind of putting crazy stuff together. I don't know why, especially if it's comfortable. And um, so this is my running around get stuff done outfit of the day you can see how this black is like drowning out my makeup but um i this is my one of my looks i've been doing a lot lately i've done it i think probably two or three times already and i think i'm gonna do a tutorial here let me take this off i think i'm gonna do a tutorial on it um because i have so many people say you want like a no makeup makeup look which i'm not really good at and also i have people complain about me using my lashes and just if you don't want to wear lashes just don't put on lashes but to me i like the way they look and they're easy i mean the thought of putting on mascara every day and having to take it off at night is just not something i want to do anymore i just love these and i literally take them off wash over my face with bioderma and it's gone no makeup remover per se or anything like that and um so i just prefer using these but um, you know, any look I do, you could do without. So, um, if you would like to see this, let me know. If, it, it might be boring to you. It's just, um, I think, one or two, one shadow on my eyes. One, no, two shadows, because I'm using a shadow as a liner. And um, no blush and um, lip conditioner. So, let me know. So, I hope you guys have a great Wednesday, and I will see you real soon. I'll see you Friday. Bye-bye.